<laughs> Hi, my name's Tim, and I'm going to show you how to put in a range top microwave right here above the oven. So I'm going to take this thing down, I guess, and I'm going to put in the microwave. Since I have to do it anyway, I figured I might as well make a video on how to do it. Let's we'll see how I do it. One of the first things you want to consider when you think about putting a microwave in is what brand you might like to get. We had Emerson before. It worked well for a couple of years, and then uh, before we went and bought the new one, it malfunctioned. When I shut the door, it was making a humming noise. There was no fan, there was no light. It sounded like it was something was running though. So I put a cup of ice in there and pulled it out a few minutes later and it was hot. So the thing, even though the timer is expired and it, there's no other indication that it's running, it's always running whenever the door is closed. So Emerson's a good cheap model that you can buy if you need to get something inexpensive and it might last for a while. But you better keep your eye on them because they could be dangerous. And you'll see that if you look at the customer reviews online. I went to the site Consumer Reports and did some research on different brands and models. And Whirlpool scores very high. There's a lot of customer satisfaction and a lot of people like it. So that's why we ended up with Whirlpool. When you're considering the dimensions of the microwave, uh, most of them come in two standard sizes, 30 inches wide or 36 inches wide. So this one's about 30 inches wide. In fact, it's uh, 29 and 3 quarter inches wide. We've got the standard size in it. One thing interesting about most microwaves is they're, on average, they're 15 to 17 inches deep. And most of the cabinetry that we see is 12 inches deep. So that means it sticks out 4 inches farther than the cabinetry does. And that's standard. Um, it's really fine. You, you might be able to look and find something low profile. Most of them are like this. And this is okay because it has the ventilation up here. It vents out the top. So if it was underneath, it wouldn't vent as well. Another important thing to keep in mind is that you want to have a certain amount of distance between your range top and the bottom of the microwave. The recommended uh, distance is 18 to 24 inches. Mine's at 21 inches. So at this height, I can put a large stock pot here. I can be cooking, I can still see inside. I can take the lid off and it's not banging into anything. Um, and I can also reach and see all the controls in the back of the stuff. So that's ideal. When you get down to 18 inches, that would be about here. And I can just barely kind of see the top of the stuff. So it's still okay. But you get lower than that, you might have trouble seeing the controls or looking into your pot or stirring. And might even have uh, problems with it getting too hot or causing damage. Depending on whether or not you actually have ventilation leading out of the out of your kitchen or not for the stove, uh, the insulation will vary. So, actually, all the microwaves that I looked at come uh, already pre-assembled for vent uh, exhaust. So it's not designed to actually have exhaust that exits the house. I suppose it's less common to have that system. But you can just look above, and I can see in the cabinets here then I don't have any ventilation here. So I was able to take it out of the box and just install it this way. And the vent works, the light works, everything is ready to go, no special insulation required. Actually, what I meant to say is the microwaves that I saw are dual purpose. They come already uh, configured to, to do either type of installation. If you had a, have an exhaust vent that runs out of your house, you remove a little screw on the back and you hook up the ventilation on the top of the microwave and there may be some other adjustment. Um, I didn't have to do that on mine since mine's just a filter and it exhausts right out the top of the front of the microwave. It comes ready to go like that and in most cases I think that's the way it is. So probably that's what you're looking at and lucky for you it's going to be easy to do. So here's the microwave, already been unboxed. Whatever uh, parts and pieces came with it are scattered around, but I'll take care of that later. So we got the stove and the range top over there, and I'm gonna go read the instructions. I'll be right back. <laughs> of course, reading the instructions is just a figure of speech. Real men don't read instructions. I might just kind of glance through them and look at some of the pictures and see if there's anything that stands out. Looks like a Okay, the instructions say to tape the door closed so it doesn't swing open unexpectedly when you're doing the installation. The one's going to blow that one open? Not anymore, because I got some tape on there. You got purple one? Yep. Yeah. Okay, the first thing I need to do is remove the uh, existing ventilation that's up there, or the hood, whatever that's called. Um, 
There's no instructions in the manual for that, so I'm just going to have to wing it. Although a hammer probably would have worked, probably a drill will work better. So let's give it a shot. So it turns out our cabinets had all these, this frame and this wood on the front of it that had to be taken out because the top of the microwave has a cord that needs to go through the hole and that hole's not in the right place. So I have to drill a new hole. And also, the microwave is going to bolt to that shelf right there. So with all the uh, braces in there and stuff, it, there was, my bolts weren't really long enough and I didn't want to bolt that long. So I took it down. It's going to fit better this way anyway. So I had to run to the store again. It turns out my walls only got three quarters of an inch so I can go through the drywall and then I hit solid steel seems like. I can't drill in any further and I measured it with a nail and that's all I have is three quarters of an inch to work with. So I can't use the screws that were provided. I had to go to the department or the hardware store and look for something else. So I found these. They're supposed to hold up to 159 pounds each. Microwave weighs about 70 so I guess I could just stick one of these things in there. I'm good. So for the installation, I had one hole that was already in place here, but it was in the wrong location. So I ended up drilling one more hole where the cord will go through. And there's two other small holes here where the bolts that are going to mount the microwave go through there. All the hardware is already up here, ready to go. There's a bolt over there, one over here. I got the screwdriver ready to go. You can see the mounting bracket already on the wall there. So the instructions came actually with a, a big piece of paper that had kind of a guide or a map of where all the holes should go and where you could mark everything. So if I had two people, it would have been a lot easier. I could have had one person hold that paper on the top and I could have just marked the holes where it should have been. Uh, since I was doing it by myself, I just taped the paper up there the best I could and then kind of uh, scooted it back and forth till I got it just right. And then I marked the holes with a, with a uh, ice pick where I was going to drill the holes and went ahead and drilled those. Same thing on the back wall. I just kind of put the paper up there, made little marks where the holes were supposed to be. And it says, you know, on the instructions, it'll tell you the dimensions, how low it should be from the cabinet and how far apart the hole should be and all that stuff. So I just got the tape measure and verified that everything was fine. So all that's going to happen is this microwave is going to hang on that bracket and then I'm going to lean it up, run those bolts through. I'm going to run the cable through there, put those bolts through and then tighten them up and it'll be installed. So it shouldn't be very hard. Alright, the microwave weighs some 70 something pounds, so it's recommended that you have somebody uh, strong to help you hang one up, a couple of strong people to put it up there. I don't have that luxury, so I'm going to do it myself. Uh, it's really, still really not that difficult, let me just show you how I do it. I just have something that I measured that's kind of uh, pretty much fills the gap between the space where the microwave is going to end up hanging and the top of the stove. I'm going to put that there to give me a helping hand. So here's the microwave. I'll just So there 
it is. In the end, installing the range over microwave was pretty easy. All I had to do was remove the existing hardware. There were a few pieces of wood that it was mounted to that came down by just removing the screws and kind of pulling the boards down. Uh, I had to drill three holes, one for the cord to go through and two for mounting screws that went down into the microwave from above. Other than that, it was just a matter of hanging the bracket on the wall, muscling the microwave up onto the bracket, leaning it up toward the cabinet, drill, you know, putting the cord up through there and uh, drilling the two screws down through the top to hold the whole thing up. It couldn't be much easier. If I had uh, studs in the house, it would have been a lot easier. I ended up making a couple trips to the store to get specialized to tools and screws and stuff so that I could deal with the problem of not having studs in the wall. If I had studs, I don't think the whole thing would have taken even 30 minutes. By the time I got the bracket on the wall, it was less than 10 minutes just sticking the microwave up, running the cables through and screwing the bolts in. So I'm glad I didn't pay for installation and if you're handy at all and you're thinking about doing it yourself, you can probably do it yourself too. So good luck.